Yes, they're going to pick him up. Situation on the road at the moment. Richard Veron, here he is, getting ever closer to the top. Leading his teammate, Paolo Bettini, by just over a minute. And then comes yeah. another third category climb before he will finally turn onto the valley approach to the town of Morzine in the Alps. 55 seconds is the lead, only back to the next man, and it should be still, I suppose, Aldag. It's still Rolf Aldag, and uh, a lot of people wondering why Armstrong didn't want to go out and lay the law down on the first day in the mountains, as he so often has done in the past. Well, I reckon it's probably because of the fact that this big climb we're going over right now, the Col de la Ramaz, is actually at 22 kilometers to the finish. Now, he could have attacked on this climb and put time between himself and his rivals, but with 22 kilometers downhill to the finish, they would have a huge chance of recovering and pulling them back and he would therefore have wasted his effort the big attack on the slope to the Alpe d'Huez though is there's no chance to recuperate there's no chance to come back by taking risks on the descent Richard Viron now is not very far from the summit of this climb he still conserves around about four minutes of his advantage but he's hurting right now and I'm not surprised he's trying desperately he's not thinking now of just winning the king of the mountains he's won that title five times before he is thinking of winning this stage and taking the yellow jersey and to a Frenchman in the hundredth year of the Tour de France that will make him a superstar and they didn't deserve such success because they had a French leader earlier in the week he was the first French leader for two years Jean-Patrick Nazon but this man is now preparing for a descent and then he'll look towards the finish he's over the top two or three men up alongside Lance on the climb today well he's proved to be absolutely correct and uh, the yellow jersey Peña has gone but Armstrong is still here. But look at this tactic of US Postal. They're using these two climbers here, Rubiera and Beltran. They seem to be keeping... Further well, back down behind that group again to find what we're calling the group Armstrong. Armstrong, uh, one of the big uh, time favourites of the tour who has lost his position in that group. The only one at the moment, we have to say. All the rest are still in it. Behind Armstrong is the Mayo Jean of Chavanel. And he's not enjoying the ride ever since we got to the steep section. Well, just as a brief reminder, if we stop the race right now, the new overall leader of this bike race would actually be Cadell Evans, yep. because Cadell Evans started the day in second place overall with a one minute, 25 minute, one minute, 25 second deficit on Chavanel. So currently, Cadell is looking like he's the virtual leader, but we've still got one very difficult climb to go. Yes, but they're saying this one is the real battle. It's a very different climb to the climb up to Avoriaz. Avoriaz is in the woods for much of the way. Plateau's near the top. We're in exposed conditions here, and the wind is very, very strong today. Wasn't much blowing at the start. The heat itself probably not a major factor at this moment in time, but we are getting up into the mid-70s right now. And it looks as though one yard is just going to ease off here. They're giving it to the strong man, I think, Paul. Mario Ertz is going to go over the top in first place. Well, about uh, 390 metres to get to the top, and Mario Ertz is riding extremely well here this afternoon for Omega Farmer Lotto. And in the group behind, in fact, uh, they've got a man who could create a bit of a surprise for Belgium as well, because Jürgen Vandenbroek, who started the day in seventh place, was looking quite comfortable in that group of uh, contenders behind. Over the top of the Col de la Ramez, almost quarter of a kilometre to go for these riders. Now, one hour, he'll descend well, he'll rejoin, and he's not going to throw too much energy to the wind here. Mario Ertz used his strength to get back up to uh, Kuss. He's done that, and he's going to take the points at the top. No, he'll take points. Uh, this will be 15 points as a first category climb over the summit here. A huge crowd turning out to see the top of the Col de Ramez. And then we are going to be faced now with a very tricky and technical descent on the way down towards the town of Leger, which is a very interesting little ski resort down in the valley below. Lovely little town. We're plunging down into the valley. And again, there's only one way out of Leger, and it's up the mountains. Mario Ertz, Kusmuren out, and Wanya. They are the first three over the top. The descent begins for them. There's a very, very elite, a very small bunch of riders coming up now. And they've been torn apart by the pacemaking of Astana. And that was the big question before the Tour de France. How good was Contador's Astana team? They're delivering their answers now. 191, Denny Menchov, the man that a lot of people have talked about as a, a silent contender here, the silent killer his nickname is in the sport because he never gives anything away when he's in a group like this. Moving up the outside of the group, there was Andreas Cloden looking very comfortable in the group as well. Levi Leipheimer, Bradley Wiggins, and nearly all of the 
pre-race favourites, the pre-race contenders, except one. One man missing from that group is Lance Armstrong. This is Christoph Ribla on the left of our picture, the survivor of the breakaway with Eviti. They're both going to be swept up now. They were originally in that seven-man escape. We're only 33 kilometers, a shade over 20 miles from the finish. But, of course, there still remains two climbs to get there. Well, the group is uh, fairly large at the moment, Phil, and I wonder if they will really insist on the descent as we go a little bit further back. There's Horner, Brakovic and Armstrong. They're looking for around about uh, 45 seconds on the group containing all of the other pre-race leaders. And, of course, let's not forget that the man who started the day in third place overall, Ryder Hazedal, is still in that group as well. Well, that's a sad picture indeed. Armstrong, they're in trouble there because Horner looks as though he's holding back to stay with Lance Armstrong. This is Anthony Chateau. And he's trying to have a little dig for the King of the Mountain points here as he heads up there. 32 kilometers to go. The peloton continually thinning out and they're racing for the small points left on the King of the Mountains. I think that was Raphael Valls who's just gone over and he will have got uh, fourth place, I think. And he's the rider who finished in uh, second place on the stage yesterday. Now we'll get a chance to have a gap here. That's a 2.10 was the time that the Astana squad went over the top of that group. And now we'll get a, an honest time check back to the group of Lance Armstrong and Chris Horner. But looking back down the road there, Phil, it already looks like a big gap. I think it is a big gap because the group Armstrong is not climbing that quickly and the leaders are and it will be opening up all of the time here. Brakovic staying with Lance Armstrong here. As Armstrong really is not wanting to live through these pictures. The bomb explodes at mi-course in the col de la Rama à l'initiative de Thomas de Ghent. Le coureur Lotto Soudal passe seul au sommet de la Rama avant dernier juge de paix de cette 103e édition.